if you aren't doing these basic crypto security measures, you could potentially get hacked and lose all of your crypto. I've seen this happen to countless people that I know. And the sad part is, with just a few basic steps, they could have avoided losing thousands, or in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, there have been billions of dollars worth of hacks in the crypto space that could have been avoided with some very basic security measures that every crypto investor should know about, including my number one security step that every single crypto investor should be doing, but that 99% of crypto investors don't. And I'll add that I've been in crypto for seven years now. And despite being heavily involved, doing a lot of things on chain, over those seven years, I have never once been hacked or lost money due to a hack. That's because I'm extremely paranoid and I try to keep the best security hygiene that I possibly can. Okay, so the first change that I tell people to make when it comes to improving your security hygiene investing in crypto is switching to a really good wallet. A wallet that makes it really easy to understand what each transaction is doing with your funds and has built-in security measures to keep you safe. My favorite wallet is Rabi Wallet. I've at this point tried most major wallets and Rabi has been overall consistently the best experience. And really the big reason that I love Rabi Wallet is how great their security features are. Whenever you do a transaction on Rabi Wallet, Rabi makes it really clear what's happening and gives you a really easy to understand like warning when you're interacting with a potentially dangerous site. I know countless people who have lost a fortune in the crypto space due to getting hacked that they could have avoided losing that fortune had they simply just been using Rabi Wallet. The second suggestion I typically make to a friend or family member when they're investing in crypto is to get a hardware wallet. When you set up a crypto wallet on your computer, you're storing your private keys on your computer. And if anyone gets access to these private keys, they get access to all of your crypto. Having a hardware wallet means that your private keys are instead stored on a device custom built to protect those keys. And it means that you can disconnect your hardware wallet from your computer so nobody can hack it. And a lot of people get confused by this. You can still use wallets like Rabi Wallet with a hardware wallet. The only difference is your keys stay safe on your hardware wallet and you have to approve every transaction with your hardware wallet connected to the computer. Hardware wallets can range in price from like 70 to $100. But typically if you're investing more than $1,000 in the crypto space, I would personally recommend buying a hardware wallet. It is worth the cost to protect your funds. My favorite hardware wallet is Trezor, but the downside of Trezor is it doesn't do anything within the, the Cosmos ecosystem. The best all-around wallet is Ledger as it lets you interact with the most chains out there. The third thing you wanna do to keep your security top notch is avoid backing up your seed phrase electronically. When you set up a crypto wallet, including hardware wallets, you're given what's called a seed phrase. This is typically 12 or 24 words that act as a backup of your wallet. So say for example, you, you bought a hardware wallet, you got it set up and like it broke, like uh, your kids stuck it in some water or you ended up losing it. Or let's say that you have your uh, wallet on your computer and your computer dies or you have your wallet on your phone and you lose your phone. How do you then access your crypto funds without you know access to your wallet. The only way you would be able to recover those funds is by using your seed phrase. If you take the 12 or 24 words, that is your seed phrase, and then go and enter them into a new wallet, so say your hardware wallet got broken, you buy a new hardware wallet, you enter in your seed phrase, you'll then regain access to all of your crypto, which is pretty cool because technically you could just memorize your seed phrase and then you essentially are carrying all your wealth in your head, even as you're crossing borders, etc. Now, the obvious caveat here is that if somebody else gains access to your seed phrase, well, then they can gain access to all your funds and steal all of your crypto. So you have to keep your seed phrase super safe. And that means not storing it on your computer or in your email or on the cloud. It is always best to not store your seed phrase electronically. Just physically write it down somewhere, etch it into metal. I don't care what you do, but typically you don't want to store your seed phrase on any sort of digital device because again if somebody gains access to it they gain access to all of your funds most people typically will take their seed phrase they'll write it down and they'll store it in like a safe they have in their home or some sort of secure area i personally store my own seed phrase separated into different parts in multiple safes with friends and family but that's mostly because i talk about crypto online i don't want somebody showing up at my house trying to get my seed phrase this way i don't have my seed phrase on me and they have no way to access it 
if they show up at my house. I also have to use other complicated things like multi-sigs so that even if uh, they were to try to pressure me at gunpoint to try to withdraw my funds, I wouldn't be able to because I got to get signatures from other account holders to actually access those funds. But for the average person, your best bet is just to not talk about the fact that you own crypto. Now, another way that people are typically separated from their funds is what's called phishing emails. If you've been in crypto for any amount of time, you'll notice you'll start to receive suspicious emails and texts occasionally. These are called phishing emails and it means that somewhere out there in the world, somebody had a data leak and they leaked your information to the dark web. And now somebody is using that info to try to trick you and steal your password and information. In some cases, these people might not even know that you actually own crypto or not. Your email could have been leaked because some random blog you signed up for or something like that. And then they're just guessing you might have crypto so they're sending you emails from Coinbase, et cetera, trying to see if they can convince you to enter your login info if you do indeed have a Coinbase account, then use that info to log into your account and steal all of your funds. Typically these scams involve them sending you like an email and those, the email will look like it's from Coinbase. It'll have all the Coinbase branding, logo in it. The email will say that it's from Coinbase. It'll say something like, we've noticed suspicious activity on your account. You need to log in right away so that we can protect your account. Otherwise, somebody's going to steal all your crypto, something like that. And when you go and click the link on this email, the link's fake. It brings you to a site that looks like Coinbase. It's identical, but it's not really Coinbase. And it has a, a place for you to enter your email, enter your password or some sort of other information. And when you do that, you're giving your email and password to the hacker who is then going to go use that email and password to drain your account of all of your crypto. And it doesn't always look identical to that. They use all sorts of tactics to make you feel like you have to rush. You have to urgently go and do this task. Otherwise, you're going to lose money or some bad thing's going to happen. No matter what the email says, always assume that it's a scam and they're trying to fish you for some sort of data or information. This means always triple checking the email address that the email came from. Typically the low quality phishing scams, it won't even be from Coinbase. It'll be like some random Gmail account. Typically the more complex ones will look like they're actually from Coinbase. Uh, but if you look really closely at the spelling on the email, it'll say Coinbase, but maybe it'll have like an extra I in the word Coinbase or, or something like that. Or maybe there's an extra period or something in there showing you that it's not actually from an authentic Coinbase email. But let's say it checks out, like it looks like it's actually from Coinbase. I would still then avoid clicking anything on the email and I would instead just go to the Coinbase site like I normally do and then check things from there on my own with uh, avoiding clicking on you know this email. A, a good rule of thumb is if it feels even slightly suspicious, it probably is a scam. And this leads me to my next security measure that everyone should have, and that's two-factor authentication. In general, even outside of crypto, you should have two-factor on all of your accounts because of all the insane data leaks that happen these days. It really is just not enough to have only a password protecting your account. You need to have extra measures to keep your account safe. Two-factor authentication makes it so that even if somebody has your password and email, they still can't log into your account without an extra code that either comes from an app, a text, an email, etc. There are tons of different ways, as I just mentioned, to do two-factor. You could do it via SMS or text. So uh, when you go to log in your account, you'll get a text with a code. You'll have to input that code, then you can finish logging into your account. You could do it over email. Same thing, you'll get an email with a code, use that code to log into your account. You can do that with an app like Google Authenticator, which just generates new codes every 60 seconds. So that even if, uh, you know, say the attacker got an old Google Authenticator code, it wouldn't work 60 seconds later. Like every 60 seconds, these codes are refreshed. You open in your app, you grab the code, you input it, and it's good as long as it's within that 60 second time frame. And then finally, there's like physical hardware devices. So you can actually get a physical hardware device that you plug into your computer and you have to like press on it in order to log into your account. And if somebody doesn't have that physical hardware device, they can't log into your account. Typically, the least secure way to do two factor is going to be SMS, and the most secure way is going to be either the Google Authenticator app or a physical hardware device. And every account that you have should have two factor on it. So you're all your emails should have two-factor authentication on it. Your cell phone login should have two-factor authentication. All your crypto exchanges and accounts should definitely have two-factor authentication. The more things that you own that have two-factor, the safer and more secure overall you're gonna be. And I still have three more ways that people often get hacked and like security measures you can implement to avoid those hacks, including one that 99% of crypto investors don't do, but that could potentially save you a fortune. And I'll share all of those in just a second, but really quick. The Obsidian Council is my private research community where I share monthly research, my entire portfolio updated monthly with the exact allocation I bought and a ton more. We've had projects like Pindle, which is up over 1500%, projects like Solana, which is up over 779%, 
29%. Projects like Akash, which is up over 1,700%. And recently, I got really lucky with Goon, and it went up over 179,000%. That definitely is not typically normal, and that's definitely an outlier example. We also have the airdrop guide, with some members made over $26,000 last year from airdrops alone, covering their entire membership for literally decades. I personally made well over 100K between this year and last, and I share everything I'm personally doing with airdrops with the community via the monthly airdrop guide. The Obsidian Council is currently closed. But if you want to join the waitlist, there's a link in the description of this video. Okay, so I sort of mentioned this one earlier, but I really want to emphasize it. And that's triple checking every single URL that you ever click. I don't care if the link comes from the verified Twitter account, it's on the official website, you get it from a Discord announcement. All of these things have been and can be compromised. You should always make it a habit to triple check every single link that you click when it comes to crypto. You're gonna look for spelling errors. You're gonna make sure that it's not a hyperlink. Basically, uh, sometimes people write out text that looks like the correct link, but if you actually copy the link and then paste it into the browser, uh, underneath that text is a different link. It's kind of like how in an email you might have text that says click here and it's highlighted blue and underlined and that's a, a link that the words click here. In that same way, people actually write out the whole URL, making it look like it's specifically just a link when in reality it's just text. And when you click that text, within that text is a hyperlink to a site that's a different site than you think you're going to. It pays to have a healthy level of skepticism and paranoia within the crypto space only the paranoid survive. After this, the next thing to be careful of is SIM swaps. This is kind of a plague within the crypto space and a really big unknown threat that a lot of people don't realize is a huge vulnerability in their overall system. And SIM swaps have caused millions and millions in, in hacks and losses in the crypto space. It turns out that like in the traditional phone security is really, really bad and really, really low as it is seemingly really easy for some random person to call up your phone provider, pretend to be you and convince that phone provider to switch your SIM card, your SIM number or identifier or whatever to their phone. Basically meaning like their phone becomes your phone. So if like uh, you have two factor on your account and you get a text, well, they just log in with your password, your info, and then they get the text instead of you. And then they log into your account and steal all your funds. And as I mentioned earlier, this means that like two factor over text is actually the absolute worst. And you should not be using that. You should, I mean, it's better than nothing, but what you should be using is something like a Google Authenticator app or a YubiKey or something like that. Now there are measures you can take to protect your phone from being SIM swapped. One of the things that you could do is you can call up your phone company or like log into your app or whatever, and you could actually lock your SIM. And this does add a measure of security, but I've even heard of cases where they had their SIM locked, everything was locked down, and still a bad actor was able to get in, convince the phone company to, to switch the number and steal everything. So it's better than nothing, but even still, you should just not in general rely on your phone uh, when it comes to two factor or anything else and assume that somebody could SIM swap your phone and get access to your number. Finally, one thing that 99% of crypto investors don't do and probably aren't even aware of that could potentially save you a fortune is using what I call cold storage addresses. I'll often transfer my larger holdings in crypto to a new fresh address that's only used to hold and store large amounts of crypto. I will never use this fresh address to do anything but send and receive funds. I never do swaps on that address. I never stake on that address. I never approve any sort of smart contract on that cold storage address. If you don't know what big reason people will get hacked in the crypto space is because they approve a transaction that allows uh, whatever smart contract to drain their wallet. And so these cold storage addresses are really safe because you're never approving any transactions on that address. And say, for example, I wanna sell those funds, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go onto my cold storage address, I'll send those funds to an active address or address I do use to stake and swap, et cetera, and then I'll sell them on that address. And this makes it so that even if I accidentally I did approve a malicious transaction that drained my wallet, the most that they would be able to drain would be just what's in my active address. They wouldn't be able to touch any of the funds in my cold storage addresses. If you have a hardware wallet, you might not know it's actually super easy to spin up new addresses. You go into the settings, you connect your hardware wallet, and you actually have a ton of different addresses that you can turn on that you can use for various different things. And these addresses, although they're using the same hardware wallet, are all completely separate. So if somebody compromised one of those addresses and drained all the funds, that doesn't mean they're going to be able to drain the funds from all the other addresses. 
they're all enclosed and separate. And this is just a really common sense handy trick that I think a lot more people should be doing that really gives you an extra measure of protection when it comes to your crypto. Make sure to sign up for my free weekly crypto newsletter. It's mostly just all my content I put out each week in an easy email so you don't miss it. But occasionally I do drop some other cool stuff in there. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments or any other cool security measures that you implement, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified each time I release a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.